Hi everyone, my name is Ryan, I'm a presenter at SciTech. However, like most people, I'm not currently at work, so here I am in my dining room. Welcome! Now, at home, have you ever had a pet fish? Or perhaps you've seen a fish in the wild, in the ocean, river, lake, etc. Well, I'd like to help you learn a little bit more about them today. We're going to have a look at how fish maintain neutral buoyancy. That is, why they don't float to the surface and why they don't sink to the bottom. And to help us, we have a couple of experiments. But first, what is buoyancy? Buoyancy is an upward force that acts upon objects in a fluid like gas or liquids, such as water. That buoyancy depends on the densities of the objects to go into the fluid. Objects that float have lesser density than the water it displaces. Objects that sink have a greater density than the water that it displaces. Some fish like to sink to the bottom and they live their everyday lives there. But quite a lot of fish like to maintain a neutral buoyancy and that is not floating nor sinking. Our next experiment is going to look at how sharks do just that, maintain neutral buoyancy. And yes, sharks are fish too. Now, like fish, sharks come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Some sharks prefer to sink to the bottom of the ocean, whereas some sharks like swimming through the open water. Of those species, if they stop swimming, they will likely sink to the bottom of the ocean. That's because their bodies are so dense. However, this isn't the case. This is because sharks are equipped with an oily substance called squalene in their livers. So what we need for this experiment is a tank full of water. We have some blue tack here for weight. We have these two shark cutouts. And of course, two plastic containers filled with water and oil. These are going to act as our shark's livers. Okay, we're going to experiment with these now. What I'd like you to do is put some weight on the bottom of each of our shark livers like so. Make sure those lids are on tight, you don't want to make a mess. Make sure to start off with, it's an even test with even weights on the bottom. Okay, we're going to put our shark cutouts underneath, like so. So now we have our two experiments ready to go. We have our oil liver, which is going to represent oily, and we have our water liver, which is going to represent without. We're ready to put them into our water. But first, what do you predict is going to happen? We have a liver filled with squally compared to one that is not. So, as you may well have predicted, the oil is less dense than the water in this case. So, the liver with the squalene in it provides a counter to the density of the shark and therefore it floats. Our shark that did not have the squalene, of course, has sunk to the bottom. Do you think at home you can make a shark liver that has neutral buoyancy? Maybe if you add more weight, you can do just that. Okay, so another fascinating way that non-shark fish species maintain their neutral buoyancy is through the control of a swim bladder. A swim bladder is a gas-filled internal organ that majority of ray finned fish, including seahorses, salmon, cod, and many other species, all have. Our final experiment is gonna show why it is so important for fish to control that swim bladder. Come on, I'll show you what you need to get for the last experiment. What you're going to need, one plastic bottle filled with water, a jar filled with water, a pen lid with no hole in the top, blue tag, a fish cutter. The reason that I want you to have a pen lid without a hole in the top is because this is going to act as our swim bladder for our fish. It's very important that we can trap some gas, in this case the air, 
inside our pen lid. If you have not got a pen lid with a hole on top, use a little bit of blue tack to seal the top. But what I want you to do next is to get a bit of blue tack and put that at the bottom of your pen lid. This is gonna act as the weight of your fish. Once you've added your weight to the pen lid, swim bladder, I want you to pop that in the water, like so. We want it to float. It floats because the air in the swim bladder is counteracting the density and weight of the blue tack. Now we want to make sure it's floating for this next experiment. If it isn't floating, you might need to take off a little bit of blue tack from your pen lid. Once you have made it this far though, you are ready to add the pen lid to our water bottle. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to add our fish on. Now make sure you drop it in nice and slowly so that the air doesn't escape from our pen lid or swim bladder. Once you've done that, you can tighten the lid. Make sure it's nice and tight because we don't want any water to come out. Now, I want you to pretend that our fish is going to go for a swim. It's going to go very deep into the water. What happens when fish swim deep into the water? As we get deeper, well, the pressure of the surrounding seawater increases. Well, we can mimic that effect in our experiment here. What I'm going to do is squeeze this bottle, and you can follow along at home, and we're going to watch what happens. Interesting. Why does this happen though? Well, as we squeeze the bottle, we're increasing the pressure of the water, and this squeezes the air inside our pen lid as well. This happens in fish in real life as they move between depths. The pressure squeezes the gas inside their swim bladders. What this is actually doing is making the fish more dense than the surrounding water and therefore it's natively buoyant. It sinks. How hard do you think you'll have to squeeze the bottle to keep the fish in the middle where it is neutrally buoyant? I want you to try it at home. Fortunately, fish have amazing ways that they can control the amount of air in their swim bladder. This allows them to stay neutrally buoyant depending on the depth. Different species have evolved different ways of doing this. Herring and eel, for example, gulp at the air to control that change. Most species, however, use a gas gland and it kind of works like an internal scuba tank which allows them to change their swim bladder's density. If your pen lid doesn't sink to the bottom when you squeeze the bottle, you might need to try a few different things. You might need to either add more blue tack to your pen lid, you might need to squeeze a little harder, or you might need to tighten the lid at the top. And there you have it. We've just explored the two most common ways that fish maintain neutral buoyancy. We've looked at squalene and sharks and swim bladders in ray fin fish. Now, if you've enjoyed the experiments we've done here today, you can do a couple of things for me. The first thing is, explore the world around you. With so many other fish species out there today that we know of, you never know what you can discover. And the second thing is, we'd love to hear from you. By using the hashtag SciTech at home, we'll be able to stay in touch. And we'll see you on the next video.